welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Challenge of the Yukon. Original air dates October 27th, 1950, and the title is A Call to Action. Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns... In cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And then, on your <laughs> Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Adventure will begin in just a moment. Nursing today offers an ever-widening sphere of activity. For the professional nurse, there are openings in the armed forces, civil defense, hospitals, teaching, foreign service, clinics, and many other areas. The practical nurse, another important member of the nation's public health team, is providing more and more nursing care in homes, hospitals, and public health agencies. The student of professional nursing studies in well-equipped classrooms and laboratories. When she graduates from her three-year course, she is eligible to become a registered nurse. Or, if she attends a four- or five-year collegiate school, she may earn a B.S. degree. The student in practical nursing attends a 12- to 18-month course, which includes supervised experience with patients and classroom instruction. For further information about a nursing career, write to Nursing Careers in care of local postmaster or inquire at your nearest school of nursing or hospital. This message is brought to you as a public service. As the sergeant drove his canoe through the still waters of Caribou Lake, a sudden flash of light from Bird's Landing caught his attention. <laughs> That's Tommy Bird signaling to us for the mirror, King. We'll see how well he's learned his lesson once he's going out. Who goes there? <laughs> We've been challenged. Another series of flashes came from the Indian village on the far side of the lake. And the Sherlock King, what's he saying? Oh, another challenge. Send the fold. Well, I'd better put the country's mind to rest. The sergeant took his gold whistle from his pocket and spelled out an answer. NWMP, that should identify us. If I can hear the whistle, it's still against. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. Charlie says, Welcome, King. Now, oh, what's too like, sir? Welcome, too. And they're both very good. During the next 15 minutes, as the sergeant continued paddling toward the landing, the trader's son and the Indian boy continued to flash messages at him. When the dock was finally reached, Tommy was waiting eagerly. Go out, Tyra! Come on, Morris, Clark. You want to make any mistakes? Both you and Kulak were perfect. We've been practicing every day, ever since you taught us the code last spring uh, and how to use the mirror. Every day there was any sun at him. Didn't I make a single mistake? Only one. Yes. Well, uh, one of your messages was to beware of bears. Oh, I know there wasn't much sense to that one, but it's a good idea anyway. I agree, Charlie. Still, beware is spelled uh, B-E-W-A-R-E, not B-A-R. <laughs> is that all it was wrong, Sergeant, just spelling? That's so. all. Well, Kulak and I have been hoping you'd pay us a visit to him, so we could show you how fast he... He sent another message. The end... Are you going? You better tell too like that you was found Y O U. Oh, he knows that. He's just saving time. Going to visit us. Let me have your mirror on, I think. Use your whistle, Sergeant. That sounds key. He must have been a mile away and I heard you plain as anything. Go on, use it. All right. <laughs> 
Preston made that stop at the trading post in the Indian village. And it was midwinter before he hit Caribou Lake again. <laughs> this time, it was snowing hard, and the team was glad to reach the well-packed main street of Portage City. Both the sergeant and the dogs were looking forward to food and sleep. But a large crowd in front of the palace cafe warned the sergeant there was trouble in town. Hey! What do you mean, come in here and give the dog a hand? Oh, what do I do, Mac? Uh, you sure will. Come in, come in. What's the matter? Uh, Charlie's Moore. He's taken in here about 15 minutes ago in class. Oh, still? So? Uh, shot in the chest and beat up. I sure forgot Monday and cleared everybody out of the place. We had one to cut in the back room now. Here we are. Just a second. Uh, who shot him? I don't know. He passed out before he could tell us anything. Come on. I brought Sergeant Preston, Doug. Good. Uh, hello, Sergeant. Hello, Doug. I'll have to probe for the bullet. There's an outside chance he might come to while I'm doing it. I don't want him to move. Stand at his feet, Mac. Right. His arms, Sergeant. All right, Doug. Now then. Badly beaten around the head. Yes. Sir. There's no fracture. Possible concussion. There. And that was quick. What are his chances? Yeah, it's hard to say. This wound won't kill him. He's lost a lot of blood? Yes, and he's shot to consider. Lift him up gently, Sergeant, while I bandage him. So? That's right. He didn't say anything, Mac. But he didn't have a chance. The door opened and he stumbled in and fell down on the floor, out like a light. All right, Sergeant. <laughs> Poor savage. Looks like his lucky strike won't do him much good. And after all the years he's been prospecting. What was his strike, Mac? The South Creek. Close to here, around the curve of the lake. Oh, uh, I know it. He lived on this claim? Yeah, yeah. He built himself a cabin last for him. He wasn't in town this evening. No. He must have come all the way from his cabin after he was shot. I better get out there. Do you uh, want me to show you the way? That's your way, Mac. There's no chance of telling us what happened. Not to tell tomorrow, if you're... We'd better see what we can find at the cabin. Oh, I'll take that slug out. Yeah, yeah. 38. Oh, come on, my friend. The storm was getting worse as the sergeant drove across the corner of the lake to the opening of South Creek. But it was a simple matter finding Silas Moore's cabin. A lamp was burning inside it, and the front door was wide open. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess I wasn't thinking much about lamps and doors when he left here. Now, what are you doing, man? Punching the team? Only thing. I'm trying to see the better detectives than I have. Come on, boy. <laughs> the two men and the dog entered the cabin. The lamp was on a shelf. One of the chairs was broken. Another chair, the table, and the cot were overturned. In a far corner, two of the floorboards had been torn up. Looks like Sir put up a good price. Robbery. Yeah. Was he in the habit of keeping much gold here? And I can't say as to that. He sure didn't put much stuff in banks. So he kept his gold hidden under the floor. That yeah, must have been. And when came here and fortune was all of the gold wire. I beat him up. And put a bullet through the old man before they left. See? Here you are, they. Jack's all covered up outside. And there's no telling him this thing. I wasn't wearing huh? I wasn't wearing hard nail boots. No, much like him. Look at this thing on the floor here. Yeah, hot nails. There's another thing in the ice is the size of stones. Well, somebody wearing much like me dead. But it wasn't fire, the fence too large. Yes, you're right. Two men. At least. He can get a fence in these fence. He might be able to pick it up outside. We'll see. Here, boy. <laughs> King understood the command, sniffed the footprint in the ashes, and then started for the door. <laughs> Just that, King. I want to look around here a little more. 
Quite a few supplies on the shelf. They don't seem to have been touched. Ah. Did Jonas have a team in a sled, Mike? I don't know. He didn't. Any suspicious characters around town lately? Suspicious? Well, I wouldn't say any strangers. Yeah. A couple of prospectors passed through the day before yesterday. Asking questions? Well, if there'd been any strikes around here. And they were told about Sam? Yeah. Mm. But we told them all of South Creek had been prospected, and so I had the only pay dirt. They headed out of town for the east. They could have circled the town, come back here, dogged him. Uh, snowshoes. We're traveling light. No slutter thing here, that helps. King, I think you'll be able to track them, boy. In the storm? We'll see. Follow the trail. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Pop Wheat, Quaker Pop Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, and Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop wheat and rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. So don't miss out another day. See the star players wallop those home runs. <laughs> to continue. The following morning, as Ben Bird finished putting breakfast on the table in the kitchen of the trading post, it was still snowing, and it could hardly be called daylight. Young Tommy was out in the forest, checking on his trap lines, and Ben walked through the store to the front door to call him. As soon as he opened the door, however, he saw two men plowing through the snow toward the post. There was something about their faces that made Ben mistrust them immediately. But they were travelers. The weather was bitter, and the customary hospitality of the Yukon was not to be denied. Hello there. Hello. Welcome to Bird Landing. Is that what you call this place? Yes, I'm Ben Bird. Hi. Take off your snowshoes and come in. That's what we expect you to do. Bring the snowshoes here. Uh, bring them in with you. Get me food? Anything hot? Uh, yes. Well, rustle it. But... What's the idea of the gun? That's to make you pay attention to what I say. Rustle some grub. Sit down. There's bacon and beans on the table. I'll pour some tea for you. Um, all right, hurry up with the tea. Did, uh, did you come all the way from Portage City last night? What's it to you? Must have been hard traveling through the storm. <laughs> he says it must have been hard traveling through the storm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's feeling sorry for it. Sure, sure, that's it. Through the forest, straight north, across the border into Alaska. That's so? He told you, didn't he? But it won't be so bad from now on. We'll be traveling with dog sled and a team. There isn't much of a trail through the forest. It's hard to follow. Well, he's still worried about it, Ruth. <laughs> but he don't wonder where we're going to get the team on the sled. He's got that all figured out. Sure. I have only six dogs. Oh, don't apologize. I can't let you have my... Man. Maybe I ought to shoot him right now and save a lot of talk. Yeah. No, no. Take the dogs. And supplies, Burns. Plenty of supplies. Whatever you need. That's better. Hey, those your dogs barking? Why? No, too far away. Those are his dogs now, right out and back. It could be a trapper coming to trade. We'll go see. Go on. Ben walked in front of the two men. The one with the gun trotted him toward the window. Never mind opening the door. You can see it up through the window. Well, who's driving the sled? You know him? He's a trap. Now listen. We'll go out in the kitchen. But we'll leave the door open. Just enough to keep you covered. Get rid of this guy fast and don't try to warn him about us. If you do, I won't. Leave it to me. You be careful. Come on, Jake. Right. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, oh, oh. As the sergeant stopped the team, King, who had been working as a loose lead, ran to the door of the trading post. The great dog knew the men they had been following were inside. The sergeant opened his pocket and made sure his gun was ready for action. And then he followed King up the steps. Hello, Ben. Hello, Ben. That unusual greeting was enough to put the sergeant on his guard. Ben was standing in front of the door that led to the kitchen. King tried to circle him and get to the door, but Ben caught his eye. Hello, boy. How are you? Bring many pelts in today, Bill? No. Oh, you just came in for supplies, then? That's the idea. Well, what'll it be? Some tea and bacon. Oh, plenty of that around. Uh, why don't you just help yourself? All right. As the sergeant circled the counter, he sized up the situation. There were two sets of snowshoes leaning against the wall by the door. A puddle of melted snow beneath them. The door to the kitchen was open a little. And though he could see nothing, King had practically told them the men they wanted were up there. No doubt they had Ben covered. There was nothing to do but take Ben's lead, pretend to be a trapper, leave, and then return to the post after leaving his team in the forest. He buttoned his parka, covering his uniform completely, picked up a flour sack from behind the counter, and filled it. Two slabs of bacon, five pounds of tea, and a couple of cans of tomatoes. Oh, that's enough for now. I'll be back soon. You're always welcome, sir. I'm Bill. Charge it, will you? Sure, Bill. Come on, Jim. Sergeant walked to the front door and opened it. At that moment, however, the kitchen door also opened. Ben was knocked aside and the shot rang out. The bullet caught the sergeant in the leg, and as he fell, his head hit the door jam. He sprawled on the threshold unconscious. King reached at the black bearded man who had fired the shot and knocked him to the ground. He lunged for his gun hand, but the other man was in the room now. He picked up the poker from beside the stove and brought it down on King's head. It was a glancing blow, but it knocked him out. What have you done? I oh, should put one over on it, didn't you? Wise guy. Almost got away with it. All right. Open the big guy's pocket. Yeah. yeah. You were right. The uniform. I was sure. It's Preston. You killed a mommy. You're loco. I hit him in the leg. He knocked himself out when he fell. He won't be following anybody for a long time. Suddenly, Ben turned and made a break hey. for the kitchen. Hey, the bearded hey. man took after him and caught him as he reached the door. Got him. The gun barrel crashed down on Ben's head. Hey. Oh. Take care of him. Now we'd better get out of here fast. Here's the Monty's team. No, the traders' dogs are fresh. I'll get them hunted. I'll get the supplies for this. All right, hurry. Are you sure about the route? Across the lake to the Indian village. The trail into the forest starts there. Gotta have plenty of bacon and flour. I'll have it out in the sled by the time you're at the steam ready. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, why aren't you fellas and girls out at the ballpark these days, watching those home runs walloped into the grandstands, eating peanuts, popcorn, and hot dogs? Come out to the ball game as guests of a major or minor league team. All over the country, kids 12 years or younger are seeing major or minor league games free. All you do is bring mom or dad or another paying adult, and you get your free baseball ticket immediately inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You'll find two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Pack or Ten. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. So be guest of your favorite team at the ballpark. Rush to the store with your mom and grab free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Pop wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Pack o' Ten, which has two free tickets. The more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. Tommy had completed the round of his trap lines when he heard the shot. He hurried back to the trading post and reached it just as the two outlaws were disappearing in the swirling snow that swept across the lake. Inside the store, the boy found the sergeant struggling to rise. Sergeant, Bill, what happened? Two crooks, killers, they shot me and your father. I saw them. Which way were they going? Across the lake. Toward the village? Yes. Then north through the forest and over the border. You'd only got a message to the Indians. Well, there's no thunder. I can signal cool off. The wind's blowing in that direction. Yes. Kulak will hear my whistle. Tell him a message. Tell him what's happened. Uh, Kulak tell his father those men must be stopped. Here, here's the whistle. But Dan, he... I don't think so. I'll do what I can for him, son. You get down to the shore of the lake and start sending that message. Yes, sir. Marsh! Get on there! Marsh! Listen! The 
whistle. He's calling it, calling for help. What of it? I thought he was done for. He won't be following us anyway. Marsh! Oh. Yeah, the Indians will hear the whistle. They'll go over there to find out what's the matter. Well, what of it? We might run into him any minute now. Not a chance. I'm steering clear in the village. Look, we're coming to the shore. See the trees? But the trees... I'll find it. Our only landmark was the village. Must be over there. This is the end of the lake. If we head due east through the trees, we're bound to hit the trail. Oh, 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 oh. Help me get the sled up the bank. No more riding for you. You put on your snowshoes and break a trail for the dog. All right. Now, come on, here. Yes. There it is. March! Come on, March! Oh, oh, oh. Now, snowshoes. Hurry up. Right. Even with one of the men breaking the trail, a dog found it difficult to pull the sled through the distant snow in the forest. The man who was driving lashed them unmercifully. Lashed you! The dog pulled frantically, trying to escape the cruel bite of the whip. And at last, the trail was reached. We did it! Ah! Ah! Fresh enough to break trail? No, there's only about six inches of fresh snow. It's packed hard underneath. Climb on board. Yeah. Looks like a good trail. Maybe we should stop. No, no. March! What is that? A shot. Oh, oh, you must pull. He's from up ahead of us. Bruce, who can it be? Maybe an Indian. Ready with your gun. I can't see anything. I came from behind it. Keep down. Watch for a gun flash and fire when you see it. I can't see anything. And they're all around us. Fire at the sound. The two outlaws never had a target. Yet it seemed that the trees and the falling snow which hid their attackers so successfully could give them no protection. Come on, right with you. They left the trail to cover in the forest. It didn't help. Every few seconds, a bullet would kick up the snow dangerously close. Jake began to fire wildly. Cut that out. How can they see where we can? They can't see. You're telling them just where we are. Hold your fire until they shoot. They got us around it. We haven't got a chance. Let's try to get back to the sled. Let's make a break for it. Oh, keep down. No, we've got to get out of here. Come on. I don't know. I'm hit. I don't. Don't shoot anymore. It's murder. You stand up. All right. All right. Stay down. It's our only chance, Ruth. We'll die. You'll die anyway if you're caught. No. Get down. You'll die anyway. Ruth, you're... Don't shoot anymore. You got him. I got my hands up. Don't shoot. Back at the trading post, in spite of his wound, the sergeant had cared for both Ben and King. It took a great deal out of him, but when Tommy had finished sending his message and returned to the store, he bandaged the sergeant's wound. Then he rallied a little and was able to drink some hot tea the boy made for him. It's good, Tommy. Thanks. Oh, Dad. They're hurt badly, but they won't die. Well, King's trying to raise his head now. Don't let him get up, Tommy. That's easy, boy. Could I King? Yeah. His eyes are so sad. Nothing to be sorry about, King. You did your part, fellow. You followed the trail. You showed me where they were. I had to think of them, though. That's right, Sergeant. What? <laughs> Tommy, it was all my fault. Thank heavens you're still alive, Sergeant. We're fine, then. Uh... What's the matter, King? Dogs. I heard them, too. Could they be coming back? Go see, Tommy. Why? What do you see? A dog team. Our dog team. What? Then they are coming back. And the cat and cool and all the others are here. Indians. There are two men on the sled. The Indians captured them. They must have received your message, Tommy. Oh. What message? I used the sergeant's whistle. I sent a code message to Kula. The Indians were waiting for those books when they got across the lake. And now they're captured. They're captured, Dad. Good. Good work, Tommy. Oh, what I did wasn't anything. But if you hadn't caught me and cool at the coast, if your whistle hadn't been loud enough to carry all the way across it. Look at it, Dad. Isn't it beauty? Oh, it's the most beautiful whistle I've ever seen in my life. I agree, Ben, and handsome is as handsome does. Well, that's the like the whistle that this case is closed. <laughs> We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Weekends are wonderful when you stay tuned to Mutual. Gay entertainment to suit every member of your family puts bright sparkle into your days of fun and relaxation. 
For anyone who likes clue games, and that includes just about everyone, there's the kind you like where you can sit back and see how close the contestants come to the answer. There's music, too, of course, on Mutual's weekend schedule. Lowbrow or highbrow, you can take your choice. From full-scale productions of your favorite operas and operettas with all-star singing and dramatic casts to swing your partner sessions of real old-fashioned barn dance jamboree, you can take your choice on Mutual. Your need for late news headlines from the field of sports, as well as on the national and international scene, is not neglected on the weekend either. Fifteen-minute roundups plus brief five-minute digest come your way regularly. Gather your family around this weekend and enjoy entertainment on Mutual where there's something for everyone. All heard every weekend over most of these stations. And now, in Mounted Police Headquarters, where Sergeant Preston is seated in the office, the door bursts open and a man named Ben Scobie enters. Sergeant, you've got to come quick. Dave Wyatt has just murdered old Milo Perth. Dave Wyatt? Are you sure? Positive. I saw the whole thing through the window of the old man's cabin. Dave is still there, searching for something. And Milo was lying on the floor with Dave's knife in him. Come on, King. Hard to believe Dave's the killer. But if so, it's our job to catch him. <laughs> Did Dave Wyatt really murder old Milo Perth? If not, it'll be up to the sergeant to clear Dave and find the true solution of the mystery. But in doing so, he may find himself facing the guns of the real killers. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The delicious cereal, Shot from Gun. <laughs> By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. <laughs> This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.